Who is he supposed to look like? Jake Gyllenhaal's in, in studio. Today. Oh, movie star. Yeah, I, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, Maggie's brother. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you will. And you probably have as much money from him because you're around the track every day. We know that everybody that goes to the track just takes wheelbarrows with them to take oh, the yeah, money away. Oh, yeah, they just give the money away at the track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How are you? Jonathan Orwitz, our insider. And he's Horse also racing. A, <laughs> Horse racing insider. On everything. There I am right On there. everything. <laughs> yeah. you got to let this go. I got to yeah, a little bit. Our yeah. sock Cut fashion consultant. Yeah, and uh, he's the insider of horse racing, but he's the insider of football history. He's the insider you of, if you want to be a track announcer, this would be... Do you wait, 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 you're an insider in football history? I wrote a book at the Library of Congress with two other authors about 400 years of football in really? American life. Oh, I had no idea. Oh. You don't even listen to me when <laughs> I said to the him... The book is in Woody's bathroom. <laughs> it's in my bathroom. Every time I go to my bathroom, I look down and I see Football Nation, because it's there. I mean, if I'm ever going to spend four or five hours in there, I got something to read. <laughs> it's, it's not a quick read. Would you agree with that? Well, it's more about the, the pictures and the artifacts that are in there, and, and it is a pretty good narrative as well. Yeah. If I'm going to do a quick read, I'd read my own book because you can read, <laughs> Wait, read you, it about two do minutes. Do you also do something for the, the Chargers? I do spotting for the public address announcer for the San Diego Chargers, so statistics See? and who made the tackle on each play. Well, See? Oh. I used show? to have a spotter. I used to use a spotter when I called games. It, it, and, then I, I, and then I spotted for KOA for a while on road games. Logan really would say, hey, help that. me out here, so I'd help him out. Well, yeah. Why don't the two of you get a room? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, I had a dog or a press box. I had a dog, <laughs> I had a dog named Spotter. <laughs> uh, we do this every week. We ask you questions about horse racing. Today, interview yourself. Interview myself. What would you ask yourself? <laughs> yeah. What would you like to come here? We don't understand. Because we're really tired and we want to eat right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> what would you ask yourself if you were sitting here today? Because, you know, I'm, he's going to say, American Pharaoh. <laughs> well, he did win the Haskell last week, and well, he's going to be racing in the Travers. We've yeah. got to ask about American Pharaoh. Okay. All right, ask, your, ask yourself about American Pharaoh first. <laughs> All right, so um, American Feral. <laughs> Is that why, why are you turning that way? Oh, sorry, Jake's sitting over there. American okay. Feral. Um, yeah, so American Feral won the Haskell, won it very easily. So you would ask yourself the same question he does every week. Well, I think it's the most uh, important thing in horse well, racing absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Get it right here. <laughs> You're on the screen. You can ask yourself. There he is. Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> so what about American Feral? <laughs> <laughs> so he won the Haskell easily and and yeah, you know what it reminded me of if i may interrupt sure. for a second it was I almost I'm a, okay i'm asking the question I'm, no, I'm just making a statement i'm not asking a question i'm just making a statement it was almost like a wide receiver who gets behind the defense nobody's within 20 yards of him he catches the pass and the last 10 yards he goes into the end zone backwards taunting the defense that's what that race reminded me of it was all he had such a big lead american pharaoh did it reminded me he just kind of put on the brakes and just trotted over the last over the last few yards and crossed the finish line he was coasting and he's got yeah. such a fluid stride i actually looked back at how previous triple crown winners did in their next race and in the home stretch before he gears down american Farrell was in front by five lengths the only other previous triple crown winner who had that big a lead in the home stretch in his next race was secretariat so american Farrell just keeps adding to the laurels and the owner wants to run him at Saratoga in the Travers Stakes, and if he wins that, and then if he wins the Breeders' Cup Classic at the end of the year, then you have to put him up there as one of the best of all time, especially if he wins as effortlessly as he does. And he really should be racing in the Travers, shouldn't he? I mean, isn't that like the mecca? That it is, yeah. I mean, you look back at all the previous Triple Crown winners who ran in the Travers, the history of Saratoga being the oldest racetrack still in existence in the U.S., that's where the, the spotlight is. And he gets some good competition because the day before American Feral won the Haskell, Texas Red, who was last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, the championship race for two-year-olds, which American Feral didn't run in because he was recovering from an injury. He's now back and he won the Jim Dandy. And I mean, really, it's all about American Feral, but it'd be nice to see some, some competition and really make him earn it. But on the other hand, 
Dortmund's out with an injury, firing line's out with an injury, California Chrome won't be back until next year. So if American Pharaoh is going to run the table, it's all set up for him. The Amazing Adventures of Jonathan Less and American Pharaoh, <laughs> presented by the Celtic Tavern, the official sponsor of the Colorado Rapids. The Celtic provides a bus to every Colorado Rapids home game, and you can go tailgate two hours before the kickoff at the Celtic and try, as I do, to get through those 5,000 different kinds of whiskeys they have. I'm down to three that I haven't tried. So go to the Celtic Tavern. Despite what Les thinks, it's two blocks west of Coors Field. Go in and see my friend Noel and have the fish and chips and the shepherd's pie together at the same time. So, why don't the two of you now ask another question about American Pharaoh? <laughs> okay, I've got one. Okay. Another? <laughs> I do. I look at American Pharaoh now, and he kind of reminds me of what Tiger Woods was in his heyday. He brings people to the television screen. He brings people to the track. Um, he brings people to the, to the corporate world, whatever corporate sponsorships he has. Is, is that a fair assessment of what American Pharaoh is doing for horse racing right now? Absolutely, the viewership for the Haskell on Sunday doubled from what it was last year. Other than the Triple Crown races and the Breeders' Cup races, the peak of three million viewers, that's as big as NBC has had for one of its horse races in over a decade. And tracks are lining up to get American Pharaoh. So the purse for the Travers is one and a quarter million dollars. If American Pharaoh runs, they'll up it by 500,000. Delmar wants to have American Pharaoh, and they have the Pacific Classic. They're talking about moving their race a week later and upping the purse because American Pharaoh is the attraction in horse racing. He's, he's the tide that's lifting all boats. And what's amazing yeah. about it is tracks are doing anything they can. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a horse race. You're going to have more than one horse, but they're doing whatever they can to accommodate the one horse, and it would be the equivalent of staging a moving, say, a, a major golf tournament so that Tiger Woods could compete. It's all about American Pharaoh. Can I ask one question? What's going on? I hope it's at, about American Pharaoh. No. Oh, What's I going on in the Rapids? Uh, but I want, I want you to get up and walk with me. Come okay. Here, here, and answer the question. So what's going get, on at the track? I don't get to do this either? Yeah. No. You want me to just sit here? Yeah, you can come up and get Yeah, I'm going to eat my cinnamon so, thing. So, come here. Right. I want you to stand right here. I think I'm better looking, actually. Look this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What do you think of that? Is that, do we think that's, uh, yeah. It's pretty good likeness. Know, yeah, yeah. So what's going on at the track? So at Arapaho <laughs> Park, we have two weeks left in the season, uh, and Jake Gyllenhaal is gonna be announcing for the last two weekends. Cool. And it's all building towards the big races that will attract the horses from out of state on the closing weekend. What are the big races coming up? The, in the big races weekend? are for Thoroughbreds, the Gold Rush Futurity and the Arapaho Park Classic. It'll be the first time that Arapaho has $200,000 thoroughbred races on the same day. There's two big futurities for and a futurity and a derby for the quarter horses, mile high futurity, mile high derby, and then two big Arabian races as well. So the three breeds that race at Arapaho, thoroughbreds, quarter horses, Arabians, they have their biggest races on the final weekend of the season. See, I think you can go there now and you could be a stand-in for him in his name. A stunt double, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This really? is like watching an episode of Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> Great to Jonathan. see you. It's Jonathan. always good to see you. It's yeah. so entertaining yeah. being yeah. here. Thank you, Jonathan. Yep. You can go now. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Wherever you are. No people.